Bonnie and Clyde had been on a two-year crime spree that left a trail of dead bodies in their wake. What on, family? It's your boy, SNTV. Back at y'all with another Chirac Street Legends. And this episode is going to be about none other than Neef and Sess, a.k.a. the Chirac, Bonnie, and Clyde. Now, Neef and Sess come from that, what is now known to be 757 area. They off the Avenue, 37th place in Indiana, and they're known as an avenue. Now, a lot of people don't know that 757 is not just one set. 757 is actually three different sets, and they formed an alliance. And in the alliance, every number represents one of the three sets that they have. You have Rock Nation, or Marley World Dirty Gang. They're on 27th, from state to federal. They're in the Dearborn Homes. You also have the Lawless Booney Boys. They're from 35th to 37th, Rose to Vincennes. They're also known as the Lawless Gardens. And once again, you have the AF. They're from 35th to 37th, Indiana to Michigan. They're also known as the Burrs. Now, Neef and Sess were known in the street to be riding buddies, pretty much sliding buddies. And Neef would go do the hits, and Sess would always drive for Neef. Now, according to what I've heard, Sess and Neef were very relentless, specifically Neef. And they used to love to slide together. They used to always love to be together. And that's the reason why a lot of people think that they actually had some sort of relationship going on. Well, the truth of the matter is, Sess and Neef actually had a platonic relationship. They actually had a real friendship. At the time when Sess died, she was actually with her baby's father, who we'll talk about him a little bit more later on in the video. So Neef and Sess were put in a lot of work, and at some time or another, they ended up getting into it with the BDs from off 41st, St. Lawrence and Drexel. And Neef and Sess ended up killing a guy that goes by the name of Welch, hereby making the BDs off 41st Welch World. Welch ended up being killed in OBN territory on 40th and King Drive. And people knew almost instantly exactly who did it. You know how the streets talk. So after this happened, this is when the story really started going downhill for Neef and Sess. Make sure that you don't forget to click the merchandise link to Teesprings in the description block where you can get your latest SNTV apparel and merchandise. We have everything from hoodies to onesies to scarves, to socks, to phone cases, in all types of different sizes and colors. It's your boy SNTV. Back to the video. Apparently, Welch was walking on 40th Street with someone else. A car rolled by. Someone hopped out the car, ran up, shot Welch, killed Welch, and also shot the person that Welch was with in the leg and this murder took place may 15th 2010. of course the murder of welch didn't sit well with welch world so they vowed to get revenge on neef and Sess. Sess was killed february 5th 2011 and the newspaper reads a south Lawndale man has been charged in the february 2011 shooting that claimed a young woman's life Dwayne timberlake 22 of the 2600 block of East 75th Street faces first degree murder charges. On February 5th, 2011, a 24-year-old woman was shot to death in South Chicago, police said. The woman had parked in a lot in the 2600 block of East 75th Street and was about to enter a party when Timberlake ran up to her and began shooting, authorities said. The woman was struck in her upper right leg, upper left leg, back, right chest and twice in her stomach police said she died a few hours later officers said on wednesday they weren't sure what motivated the crime 
while Timberlake is slated to appear in bond court later in the day. Timberlake was already in jail on unrelated charges when he was charged with the murder. Neef was killed April 10th, 2011, and the newspaper reads, A man already charged with killing a Bronzeville woman in 2011 is now charged with another fatal shooting that happened later that same year, police said Thursday. Dwayne Timberlake, 22, was charged Thursday with first-degree murder for an April 10, 2011 shooting in the 7400 block of South Vincennes Avenue, a statement from police said. The 22-year-old victim was stopped at a traffic light when Timberlake got out of a vehicle in front of him and allegedly opened fire, the statement said. The man threw his car into reverse to try and get away, but the shooter chased the vehicle on foot and kept shooting until the car crashed into a parked car, authorities said at the time. Timberlake allegedly kept shooting at the vehicle after the crash and fatally wounded the man, the police said. Christopher Daniels of the 6200 block of South Perry Avenue was pronounced dead at Northwestern Memorial Hospital according to the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office. Timberlake was already jailed without bond after being charged with murder in connection with the shooting in the 2600 block of East 75th Street, authorities said. That shooting on February 5, 2011 killed Princess Streeter of Bronzeville as she made her way to a party, authorities said. Timberlake is also charged with a separate carjacking and armed robbery case, according to the Cook County Sheriff's Office. He will appear in bond court Friday on the new charges, according to police. So Tay Sav was actually charged for the murders of both Neef and Sess, but he eventually ended up beating the murders due to a lack of evidence. And this is where the story gets sad. Darius Brown, a promising young basketball player, was on the court in Metcalf Park doing what he loved when he was shot dead. The team, known for his speed and his shot, was playing in a game in August 2011 when three gang members bent on revenge opened fire. After the shooting, whether out of loyalty to the gangs or fear of reprisal, would-be witnesses in the crowded park refused to talk to the police. But on Monday, two of the men charged, Jamal Streeter, 20, and Aramis Beecham, 24, were convicted of murder. The two guys that were charged in the murder of this young man, Darius Brown, were actually the brother and the baby daddy of Seth, Jamal, and Aramis. What happened was, they was right. They spotted Tay Sav. When they spotted Tay Sav, they hopped out the car and they started shooting. It was them and another guy. Apparently, the other guy was the driver. He ended up getting off on the case. But Seth's brother and Seth's baby daddy actually caught the charge for the murder and they were actually convicted. Tay Sav ended up going to prison on unrelated charges where he remains now. I think that what we can learn from the deaths of Welch, Neef, and Sess is basically the same thing. At a time of war, you never expose yourself. It's not time to have fun. It's not time to, you know, party. It's time to go to war. So when you out, you need to be going to war. You need to be applicating war tactics. See, that it's that serious because this is the situation that you've got yourself into. This is a war. And so many times, people get caught and killed because they're not aware or don't have the mental capacity to appreciate the fact that people are riding on a daily basis looking to kill them. Welch, he was walking in an open area, him and another guy, during a time of war. Sess. Sess actually went to a party that was on the same block that Tay Savage lived on. 
How was she not aware of that? Why was she going to a party at a time of war? Neef, I feel like after Sess got killed, Neef should have got out of Dodge. He should have been nowhere to be found. Period. Until Tay Sav is off the map. Until he's gone. Because if he killed her, which he may not have knew, but still, she was shot six times. So, you know, it had to be personal. I felt as though after that happened, he should have got put up. We have to realize that when wars are fought, guys are not out here trying to get killed. That's not what they're trying to do. They're trying to use different war tactics to kill the other group. Not go do hits and then be all out in the open, exposed, very, very vulnerable. No. And people may say, well, he hide or he put up. That's cool. But never forget, I don't care what y'all say. We at war right here. Yeah, I'm hiding and I'm put up or whatever you want to call it. But whenever I pop up, you better believe that sparks are flying. Because this is the situation that I chose to indulge in. So I have to acknowledge how real this is. This is real. This is my life. And truth be told, if you didn't live through and survive, then you lost the game. I'm not playing games with my life. I'm taking all precautions when I'm in that situation. And what we can learn about the death of Darius Brown is this. Most of us are in a situation right now to where your kids will not be able to go and play basketball. They won't be able to go to the park and shoot hoops. That's, that's out of question. They won't be able to go and do a lot of these after school recreational things that keeps their mind off of doing this type of stuff, off of gang banging. So they'll too be subject to gang banging. What else are they gonna do? They can't play at the park. All of their activities recreationally has to be at school because if they go anywhere else, they face death. This is the situation that our children are living in. The last incident dealing with this situation was seven years ago. Here it is in 2020 and the same situations are still occurring every day in Chicago, Illinois. At some point, at some point, I do believe that maybe, just maybe, things will begin to get better and this cycle will begin to dwindle and a cycle of making money will develop. It's your boy, SNTV. I'm out.